foreign officials are pleading with the U.S. to stop the rise of the surging dollar. Here's how he could constructively respond, but won't. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The rapid rise of the dollar vis-a-vis other currencies is causing increasing distress with other countries. Globally traded commodities like oil and various foods are priced in dollars. The strengthening greenback means they're paying more and more for these necessities at a time when their economies are weakening. This harms developing countries, which are also feeling the pain of dollar-denominated debt. They owe significant amounts of money here. Meeting growing debt payments means cutting back domestic spending, an unpleasant prospect, especially when times are getting tougher. Numerous non-U.S. companies are also burdened with debts denominated in dollars. The dollar's strength is disrupting trade, as exporters and importers find actual payments and receipts are not what they had anticipated. Trade will thereby slow, adding to recessionary pressures. No wonder foreign officials are increasingly calling for the U.S. to take action to curb the soaring greenback. They want a so-called new Plaza Accord. Back in the early 1980s, when the U.S. conquered inflation and the economy was booming from the stimulus of big tax cuts, the dollar surged then as it is doing now. So in 1985, officials from the U.S., Britain, Japan, West Germany, and France got together at the Plaza Hotel in New York and agreed to intervene in currency markets to lower the value of the dollar and then have stable exchange rates. It worked, at least for a while. Today, the Federal Reserve and the Biden Treasury Department respond to the idea of a new plaza accord with no way. Rising interest rates, they say, are needed to fight inflation. The strong dollar means, at least initially, cheaper import prices, a good thing with inflation-angry voters going to the polls in a few weeks. Too bad for such a response. The Bidenites are blowing an opportunity to both curb inflation and significantly lessen the severity of a global slowdown in U.S. recession. Contrary to the Fed, the cure for inflation is not engineering a recession, but rather stabilizing the value of the dollar. The big mistake of the 1985 Plaza Accord was not following through and establishing an updated Bretton Woods international monetary system. Under Bretton Woods, the dollar's value is fixed to gold and other currencies are fixed to the dollar. In other words, you had virtually no fluctuation between the value of the dollar and, say, the Japanese yen. What a contrast to the chaos of today. What the Fed and Treasury should do now is convene a new plaza conference to focus on stabilizing exchange rates between the U.S., Europe, Britain, Japan, and China. Intellectually, it's much too soon to bring up gold. Officials today are truckingly clueless on the subject. But to have monetary policies focused on keeping exchange rates stable rather than orchestrating unnecessary recessions would be absolutely splendid. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. (music) 